Welcome, Perry. Hey, John David. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, very beautiful, yeah, that this technolo technology allows us to take away any distance between us. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen lately this uh, beautiful little clip that was attached to your newsletter. So I think I have seen this beautiful. Ah, yes. ah okay. <laughs> <laughs> was that the kindergarten film or was that the film yes. with Isaac? <laughs> yes. I saw both and we enjoyed yesterday with our daughter Mira that one with the kids. Sometimes it's not easy to know which are the kids, you know, and which are the... <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Happy to be with you <laughs> on this level online, but I feel very strong this connection with you guys there. It looks very comfortable, very cozy, very sweet, very sweet. One day... One day we will surely meet also in person, physical. <laughs> so I, I have a question um, about your music, actually. Hmm. How, how did your meeting with Papaji influence your music making? A musician many, many years before I met Osho and Papaji, actually. I met Osho late 70s. And uh, Papaji, I met in first time physically in January 92, last century. So by, by the time I met Papaji, I had a concept that since music is an instrument to, to get very much um, engaged and identified with being a creator, being a great musician, being carried away by these emotions that music is giving us. I, I was not playing any music actually for maybe two years. And um, because I thought this is too dangerous, too much musical ego coming up and it was disturbing. And in old Pune, I had the experience that the musicians had a hard time to stay really with the music instead with their personalities. You see, when you perform and you do any kind of performance, the tendency is very strong to get identified with what you have done and created. And I was somehow bothered by this sensation. Mm -hmm. So already in Pune, I had stopped to do music that was many years before. And uh, I was always playing for myself at home. I was playing to, to love to devotion, to God, <laughs> but I didn't want to perform publicly. And actually, in some incidents in Lucknow, it happened that Papaji made me aware that this concept is also something to get rid of. And he invited me during a wedding party. There were quite some marriages happening in Lucknow in those days, and he was visiting. And he took me along with him and then he said, uh, as if he knew that I was playing guitar, give him a guitar and let him play and sing. So suddenly there was a guitar in my hands and I, and I played and improvised just something. And that's how actually, that's how it started. And in coming Christmas, I think this was Christmas 93 or 94 in Lucknow, I prepared a beautiful song along with some other friends. Actually, this was a bhajan which was sung by George Harrison. You know, I was a great Beatles fan. I loved the Beatles and I loved, <laughs> I loved that vibe of the music and still it, it is very strong present with me. I love this beautiful energy they, they were giving musically. So George Harrison was a big musical idol of mine in those days and um, on one album of his, there was his song called Govindam. Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bajami Govindam Adi Purusham and so on and so on. So I was always in love with this song and then had the idea to perform this song with some friends to Papaji. And he loved it so much that 
I saw that there were tears rolling down his cheeks of happiness because Papaji was a Krishna Bhakta all his life. He started his uh, youth, his young life as a child of a, uh, somebody who was chanting along with his mother. His mother was always chanting Krishna Bhajans and he was a Krishna Bhakta. So whenever it was something about Krishna, it was touching him very strongly. I did not not know this at this time. He told me later actually, and that was everywhere written then in the books about him. But he had told me that um, Krishna was always with him since childhood and he loved this song. So I kind of took it as a, yeah, as a yes to go deeper again into that. And I, and I felt a certain joy coming up again, playing music with friends, with people. There was no trace of Satya yet at this point. <laughs> I was busy with other relationships at this time or rather no relationships because I was having another concept by the time that I should be alone. <laughs> having had so many troubles from relationships before, <laughs> knowing my weak spots about this, being with somebody, losing yourself in the other expectations and, and you know, all that stuff. I decided to be alone and I was quite long time alone actually, actually maybe one or two years, one, yeah, one, two years before I met Satya. So I was experimenting with music and being with myself and uh, getting lost in the community there, and especially in this ocean called Papaji. So and at one point, I met also Satya. Destiny brought me into her guest house, renting a room from her. That's how we got to practice some music together, actually first we came together through music and then um, I saw, she saw that we both love music and truth. So in that combination brought us also physically together and our hearts melted and our mouths started to sing together. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I cannot I cannot take it on my part that I met Satya or she met me and we had this music thing going on. It took quite some time actually, till we really made music together on a professional level like we did two years after that. It took about two years that I was still reluctant to go professionally into it. Professionally meaning writing songs, composing songs, which were flowing through me, but I was kind of still keeping it out of the door. I wanted to meditate rather, be quiet. There was some concept there, you know, not to get lost and <clears throat> was enough having a girlfriend by that time, but not, a, not also another girlfriend inviting music. <laughs> so I was having <laughs> enough to do with one girlfriend. So actually she was um, making music with somebody else in those days. And I was very happy about it. I thought that part is taken care for. She's happy with music with somebody else and I can enjoy myself. And later, two years later, we just happened. We sang a few times in front of Papaji. She danced for him. I played some improv improvised chords along with somebody playing flute. And that was the beginning actually of a musical friendship that we still have till today. That was more than 20 years ago. I would say 25 years ago. Yeah. My God, it sounds terrible. Huh? Still... <laughs> <laughs> Stuck with love and music. <laughs> yes. Did I, did I refer to your question? Actually, I think so. No. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. okay. Mm. We have a lot of people who would like to meet you directly, so yes, please. I'll whisper in their ear. Yeah, that's good.
So this is Kiran, who actually is a drummer and he's leading our band. Okay. He used to have a school of drumming in Berlin, but mm -hmm. uh, he left that to uh, join our community. Mm, Kiran, hi. Nice to meet you. Hi, Kiran. Nice to meet you, yes. Mm. Drummer from Berlin. Could it be that I saw you too in that little clip? Um, yes. 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 Oh, he was playing with the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He yes, was, yes, yeah. yes. Beautiful energy. Beautiful. So sweet. Music. Yeah, the such, music. Such a great channel, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You see, I was always a bit fighting with that because I thought silence is somehow higher or better or keeping my mouth shut or don't not doing anything not even music although i always loved music since since early school days when i was playing in a school band mm -hmm. in those days it was more like blues rock and, and jazz and, and all that stuff <laughs> and later a few years later i discovered meditation and spirituality and then i thought i have to give it up this music and now I find such a great teacher and such a great chance to pour love out through that channel, isn't it? Mm. So beautiful. Yeah, since I'm here, playing music is much different mm. for me. Yeah, so before, when I was like a professional, I had the idea I want to prove something I have to be mm. on a certain level and in the beginning it was the same here yeah I was like feeling a bit arrogant like I'm a musician and I know what it's like and I know what the groove is like and then people told me in a completely different language in a non-musical language play deeper play something like this play with more <laughs> love and I this was a big challenge for me yeah <laughs> Wow. But everything got more more simple, yes. and more um, effortless. Yeah, beautiful. And in the last time, they had some. I'm having some bit uh, darker um, phases now, and mm. a bit more pain and sadness. Mm. And mm. out of this, um, I would say, out of this acceptance, out of this letting all this stay yeah something changed in the music yeah mm. there is uh, there is more a more flow and more creativity and mm. um just something coming up without any effort yeah before there was always oh let's try this and this would be nice and uh, okay i'm very interested in this style mm -hmm. in this instrument and now being in a bit more um the state it, something just comes out without without any doing anything mm. and um yeah so on different instruments mm. and so, this is a very great experience yeah <laughs> sounds great there's nothing of i need to to mm. prove something or need yeah, to so in, do something so it sounds like you invited that so-called dark space or heavy whatever into the music and it had the chance to transform along with you beautiful instead of trying yeah. to keep it out and perform nicely you invited that dark thing dark space whatever that was or heavy into that into that and then it had the chance to to go through some transformation with you and the music beautiful it sounds great i mean Music is such a transformational force. It's it's just like many other arts, but <clears throat> allow me to be a bit egoistic about it. I find music <laughs> one of the one of the arts, maybe the art that is directly connecting with a deeper sense of um, experiencing art, because it's the the visual part, including which is as they detect also new uh, 
I read newly an interesting book, a neurological psychoneurology about uh, hearing and, and, and seeing that hearing is a very deep experience in our bodies and it allows to open up many more associations and experience levels than uh, mere visual. Anyway, I love painting too, by the way, and uh, but my heart is more with music. I like the, the feeling of sound and harmony. You see, it's like like in a relationship when the when the when the people are too close together and when the tunes are too close, it doesn't sound very harmonious. <laughs> there has to be a certain distance between one note and the other. Then there is some kind of harmony. They they sound harmonious. No, <laughs> there's so many beautiful yeah, yeah. Things hidden. It has to be friction a bit. Yeah. But I also experienced the, the sound very, very strong in the body. Yeah. And yeah. The yeah. last times the singing the mantras is more is yeah. much more stronger. Yeah. Much, much stronger, much more taking me away or taking me out of the mind or what whatever you say. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, there are some nice other mantras too, like here comes the sun, deep, 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 deep. Yeah. I'm open for any kind of mantra, but Talking about mantras, the Sanskrit mantras have such a strong power in the words, inherent, that you really get to feel when you, when you practice it for some time and really dive into it, closing eyes and opening heart. It's, a, it's incredible. It's, there is some hidden secret kiss in there. And I think that is the only reason why we still continue to do that because that entertainment thing about it is quite boring actually and it's also quite tiring and but that secret silent soft kiss that explodes in the heart very quietly very silently very joyously that is what what keeps me actually doing this it's a very very sweet experience in the heart <laughs> Talk between lovers. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. My guru, my technical guru. <laughs> oh, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> Actually, his family comes from Munich, so. Yeah. Oh, I'm sitting yeah. right now here in Munich. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll ask my parents to show up if you like. <laughs> yeah, send them by for a cup of tea, no problem. <laughs> if they're open to sing anytime. <laughs> yeah, they could. They could probably. <laughs> maybe, maybe you have to hand out the guitar this time. Yeah. But... Okay. He's a guitar player, your father? or? Yeah. Oh, mm, good, beautiful. I love, I love that saying of, uh, I think it was somebody from the Beatles, maybe even George Harrison. He said, "I'm, I'm playing the guitar, but I'm not a guitarist." <laughs> oh, I love to sing, but I'm not a singer. So, any, anyway, send them by, then we can sing together. No problem. When I look at you, it makes me feel very safe technically. How how is this happening? <laughs> you're emanating this this vibe that nothing can go wrong technically. You're you're good. <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs> man, beautiful man, beautiful man. We saw some pictures of you as well yesterday. My my daughter immediately recognized you also on some photos with longer hair. Oh really? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> mm. Yeah. 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 She she can come as well if you're coming. <laughs> <laughs> we are seriously thinking about it and if this 
Lockdown situation was not there. We would have anyway visited already each other last year when we met in Rishikesh with John David. We had already an arrangement to come by and I was looking forward. And then I think uh, one week or two weeks later, it was the first um, lockdown. And we have been locked up since then, basically. Yeah. So it will happen soon. <laughs> mm. I brought a question, but I want to ask a different yes. question. Yes. Um, maybe it's related. Um, a question of trust. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I sense there's a, um, yeah, hesitation or a, a mistrust, like not, not, not enough trust to just stay with myself and stay, go, go inside and be with. See, with, is this the question or? <laughs> <clears throat> um, well, the question is, <sighs> in, in, in moments of, um, of stress or something, when, when doubts or stress come up, it's very hard to discriminate whether to to act upon the stress ideas i have to do something i have to do something or what to do in that moment mm -hmm. or to trust to trust the silence yeah 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 you see dearest brother om i trust that you completely take care of this technical part and i feel completely happy feeling that trust and what we often mistake is the same problem like with love and some other beautiful feelings like that. We often attribute these feelings having to do with somebody else. Like love immediately has to do with somebody else. That's what we think often. Or trust has to do with something, some situation, some emotion, some thought, somebody or something outside ourselves. And this is quite a hard lesson to learn in life and it's a beautiful lesson to learn that trust just as love and other feelings like that very deep feelings like that have to do only with uh, being with oneself <clears throat> even to say being with oneself is is a linguistical problem or trusting oneself because there is still too involved trust and self it's basically the quietening of this issue that there is something or somebody or some situation outside of myself that I need to trust or reach a goal of trust, permanent trust, against something poured out of my heart. I would rather advise to experience the doubting and to look into the stress, to experience that negative side of it and to really deeply look into this and to feel that we are experiencing that what we're experiencing right now not being forced but apparently according to our conditioning that's what comes up allowing that it may take us deeper into another deeper experiential field which is more taking responsibility for all our emotions, all our experiences. And when that feeling of responsibility grows, then there is no question anymore of things that happen to me from outside or situation or stress and how to deal with that. I take responsibility. I am with the situation. I am with the moment. I'm flowing with what wants to appear 
in front of me, within me, outside of me, whatever. There is no gap anymore. That gap is finished, it's closed. And in that moment, we experience the deeper meaning of trust, which is basically being friendly to oneself, not allowing any situation or any, any outside call, whatever happens, it's not even not allowing, it's simply not possible anymore. The moment we are completely accepting that what wants to appear and wants to happen. And it's not always easy, sweet chocolate things that want to appear. Some situations are truly challenging. And God thanks it's like that. Otherwise we would live in a chocolate cake of spiritual illusions. So whenever we fall out of that so-called trust, it's actually a moment to celebrate. Wow, great. So there was a situation that is powerful enough with my active identification, with my active cooperation to drag me out, to let me go on another merry-go-round. What a great teaching, what a great situation to look at it, to experience it. That's why I say it's actually more helpful to experience than the negative part of trust than trying to always stay within the trust. Trust is something that grows like a sweet flower in the heart. The more we see the fact that there is nothing else existing other than love and trust, another word for, for, for beingness is trust. How can you not trust your breathing, for example, while you're in trust, while you're in stress? Whatever happens, you're br still breathing. <sighs> Maybe a bit more agitated, but still you're breathing. Similarly, whatever happens is accepted and taken into the heart of the present moment. And then it, it's not an issue anymore. So it's a lot to do with accepting whatever wants to appear let it appear letting it appear that is that is a big one so i'm not hunting for the positive result i'm looking at the negative situations sometimes they're a greater teacher aha uh -huh. so this managed again i was again out of context out of everything i just was running after being good efficient trusting that is just um Another trick of the mind to pull us away from silence and peaceful, accepting, difficult situations. <laughs> Are you doing Vipassana? No. <laughs> Actually, funnily enough that you should say that because at this very moment, we've got about 14 people sitting in a room together oh. for two days, blindfolded, oh. doing Vipassana. Yeah, right okay. now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm affected. <laughs> okay. In old Pune, it was one of my favorite groups. I've done it a few times. Yes, I have. I have prepared a question. So my question uh, is uh, on your spiritual journey. Um, was it more like a gradual change or did you have one or more stronger moments where something happened or strongly changed? Both, I would say. Gradual and a couple of sudden moments that were very decisive decisive how you say 
but all in all a process that has not found an end to it yet i'm hoping one day to find some end but it's <laughs> it's no end it's no end so it's a very interesting and beautiful question because we have a concept that we reach somewhere isn't it and the disappointing fact about it is that we maybe gradually in some cases also very fast and explosive explosingly suddenly we let go of all kinds of expectations that we should be somewhere else than where we are or somebody else than who we are it, it drops off as a cloud of illusionary waiting for godot or for something to arrive call it spiritual enlightenment call it whatever it's all illusions and all dreams that with the help of continuous disillusionment help to open the eyes for the real that is already the case and it's already in front of us within us and all around us happening and the and the gap between me and that simply melts away the were in my because you asked me i want to be very precise as precise as possible i i felt when i was 18 or 19 i had a strong call to go to india for some reason and to look for a spiritual master and first i was drawn towards an indian spiritual master who was called satya sai baba he was coming in my dreams and i was dreaming of him almost on a daily basis for some time of my life i was 19 or 20 sometimes to the point that i was disturbed by it so when i was 22 i was studying medicine and psychology in dusseldorf in those days and decided to go to india to see this man this master satya sai baba since i'm dreaming about him and uh on the way to, to his place, to his ashram, which was in South India near Bangalore city, I um, made a little stop over in Pune and um, <laughs> fell, in love, <laughs> fell in love with Osho. He was talking about Zorba the Buddha in those days and uh, me, I was always very much in love with Zorba the Greek and never thought about the possibility that Zorba and Buddha could be one. <laughs> Somehow something touched me very deeply and still that desire to travel on on my spiritual search was very strong enough so I left Pune after a month or something with a heavy heart though but I still managed to leave because I was a serious seeker you see and I did not just stay there because it was beautiful I wanted to have the real thing so I <laughs> So I left Osho in the community and I traveled to South India, met this guru, I will make it short. I met this guru and he gave me um, some vibhuti, some ash, which I still have some part of it. And, and there was in my heart a deep feeling of, okay, so what? And I was very disappointed, disillusioned, because uh, this was somehow the goal of my dreams, of my spiritual dream, of my endeavor. And after five or six days, I left and uh, stayed alone in a place called Hampi for a month, living alone like a hermit. And there I met an old friend of Osho. While Osho was a professor in Jabalpur University, he had a friend. And that friend happened to live in, in Hampi. And I met that guy and we used to do yoga together. He, we were singing together and then he was showing me also some pranayam exercises and he told me after a month you know what young man i think you should go back to Pune and be with my old friend 
and give him also greetings from me. And he wrote me a little letter and I took this letter and next morning I was on the train to Pune and I was, my heart was jumping of happiness and joy to go back and experience whatever was there to be experienced. So it was a gradual thing, yeah. Looking back or looking to the front or wherever one looks, it is a gradual thing and still it's help some kind of veal which is also my own creation there is no veal it's just my own creation everything is my own creation it helps that own creating faculty called mind to be quiet and that quietness found something like a peak when i met papaji there were few decisive moments with him when there was no need or no urge or no motivation, no desire to create anything anymore, not even a desire for freedom or whatever I, I was after. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, and this is going on. This happiness of not creating and being completely in a continuous creating state <laughs> that is the absurdity or the, the the strange thing about it. Things being still being created around me, within me, with me, without me. <clears throat> but uh, I think I'm 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 not creating anymore, you see. And this makes a big difference in a way. I don't know if it's uh, understood what I'm saying, but <clears throat> but meeting Papaji was a definite cut in that experiencing me as somebody who does something and not in a in a in a, in a verbal uh, sense he was my spiritual teaching was actually tickling he tickled me i had a beautiful deep question and he just uh, called me to the front to sit on his lap and i was sitting on his lap like a little boy on on his daddy's lap and he was just tickling me saying, oh, it's a very good boy. This is a very good boy. <laughs> and I just cracked up. I was just finished and cried. And, and, and he was hugging me. And I was completely out of any context. It took me a few days to come back to some kind of a context or point of, uh, how you say, reference. <clears throat> Nothing seemed to be connected with each other. My girlfriend in those days I was with, she, she couldn't handle me, so she had to leave. <laughs> and it, after a few days, uh, I could uh, sort out things a bit better, peu a peu. <clears throat> so that was a very... And then my mind tried to make an experience out of it. And, okay, because this, and it continued to let go also of that. And it's still continuing to not hang on to anything. That life is too beautiful, too precious, than hanging on to anything that happens. <laughs> That's what's happening is much more fun and it's much more exciting than whatever has happened. Even that experience is also just an experience and it helped me to enter something that is continuously happening. That is it. <laughs> 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 you're preparing the, the cook you're cooking in the, in the kitchen yeah beautiful yeah beautiful. and there i can see um hmm. i'm also often not to cook hmm. so, and i learned during this this more than 10 years now uh, often just to wait what to cook and then it comes during the day and this I cook then and then it developed during the cooking I'm still developing all kind of things which are different than I started with <laughs> okay <laughs> so and this is very beautiful to live from this from this part or from this however um because it's much easier um <laughs> before I was thinking mm. very precise what I want to cook and then I just <clears> buy <throat> and then had to plan everything mm -hmm. and so it was also touching me very much what you talked with uh, with ohm mm. about this um, goal and good experience and to welcome the negative side or the negative of this 
more than to 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 always look at this positive that it comes out positive yeah? mm. and then you become in stress and to to get it together mm. this uh, it was I, I like very much it was really nice mm. Mm. So you are, so you are the cook that allows food to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you're, and you're responsible for that creativity. Most of the time, I would say. <laughs> Beautiful. <I love> it. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yes. <clears throat> One learns like this to go out of one's own way, isn't it? And yeah. then things happen smoothly and beautifully harmoniously friendly mm -hmm. i was also responsible for the kitchen while i was in dusseldorf in asanya's community for some time so i love i love cooking very much it's very yeah. very challenging very beautiful because if 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 the food is not good <laughs> one gets immediate results from the by the others isn't it <laughs> Yeah, I'm wondering that I'm also still like it. <laughs> Every day again, it's, uh, it's like new and... It's a nice challenge. Year. It's a beautiful well, challenge. Mm, beautiful challenge. Nice. Many things come up, cook up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. I had also prepared a question, but uh, it was yes. a bit similar to, uh, to um, Gloria's question. Um, the development since your awakening with, with Papaji or the time with Papaji until now, um, how you feel this changing no? uh, in, in this time, how you perceive the world or perceive Papaji or everything actually. How do I perceive the world and everything, including Satya? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you can leave the world. We just like to know about Satya. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Much more, much more interesting. We are both. I think what what makes our relationship and our love work and 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 grow is that we are both married to each other, but also to to a third partner, if you may call. And he's actually the closest of us it's our own self and she has exactly the same love affair and the same deep love and connection with with that which we were shown by papaji in lucknow and before that by osho and this has been always the the kit, as they, saw, as they say in German, the glue for our relationship. There are always times, you know, when things get rough between people because two personalities, there are always challenges. But we don't expect that these challenges or these expectations really have to meet the other. They are, they are allowed to be there, but they don't need to be met by the other. I don't have a desire to be understood by her or by anybody anymore. This is not so important as it used to be. In old days, it was always there that the, the desire to be understood. You see, how many nights we were discussing in those days, in student days, whole nights discussing about useless things and there was never an end to it. <laughs> and me personally, I I don't experience actually so much to be true. If if you ask me clearly what changed or what is I don't experience so much. Sometimes I I wonder there's there's surely all the time things happening but I cannot say I separate myself from what's happening so that I can experience it, you see? There's no interest anymore to experience things as a separated somebody who then photographs it or talks about it or remembers them or gets high on them or down on them things are coming up all the time things as life is happening it's, it's a beautiful flow and 
I don't keep record. I can talk about it, but there's no interest to experience anything more than what is happening. That beautiful, real, one-to-one, -one, where even the number one is too much. Some difficult to talk about it, but that is this love affair. Love affair with one, actually. Love affair with one. If it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> the other is not so important. Also myself. Also the connection, the, the relation to myself. The reference point. Also not so important. The reference point from which everything makes sense. And it is there. It's allowed to be there within this body-mind thing, but it's not something that I refer to. I love your question. It's a very beautiful, deep question. I would wish to, to, to ask to, uh, to answer you more about that. Maybe some other time. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's, it's fine. And I experience the same with the community also. I Good always point. say a bit like, at the end, we are alone. Nobody can really... Yes, like especially, especially in a community. Look, you are living there, so many beautiful people together, but isn't it true that I know, I know, sure, yeah. at the end of the day, everybody is alone and during the day too. You're responsible yeah, for yourself. Also... You're living with yourself and for yourself together with other people. Mm -hmm. But one is actually alone. Whether one is in a relationship or not, one is alone. And it's not something that there's missing anybody there. One still feels that something is missing when he's not ready for a relationship, actually. Or yeah. one should just do it. <laughs> or one should just jump into it and experience the dream and the illusion. The community will make me happy. The husband or the wife will make me happy. I'm getting lost in this community of people. I've had this dream. You know, I lived also in America in the community with my sannyasin friends. And we were believing in the community instead of believing in, in the love and awareness and consciousness in, which is in our heart and sharing this is the community, not just our little personal egos and likes and dislikes. This was a beautiful experience, by the way. And when everything collapsed by the end, many were disappointed. Oh, the whole thing collapsed. I, I was not disappointed for the simple reason that for me it was never about what we were doing and creating together. It was beautiful, it was great, the streets, the houses we were building, I was actively building houses. But when this whole thing collapsed, I realized that the essence was this love affair with myself. And this beautiful man, in those days I was projecting this beautiful man on Osho, Bhagwan in those days for me. He never ceased to be admired and loved from my heart, even if this whole thing collapsed. Because it was not about proving to the world that we have a great place, you know, where there was no uh, sexual harassment, no aggression and all that stuff. It was a beautiful place, but uh, there was something deeper that was happening there. and. And that is for me the heart of a community, like what I sense when I look at these beautiful people. Mm. That this is actually the point, that we keep the body healthy and strong and clean and organized and structured as good as possible. So everybody contributes to that. It's like when you brush your teeth and clean your body, so that commune needs also cleaning and preparing and love and care without need to be acknowledged for that because I don't want to say thank you my right hand that you brush these teeth again it's one organism but it's finally about a deeper goal of being in harmony and in love with oneself this is this is absolutely clear <laughs> thank you mm -hmm. <laughs> Beautiful to meet the king. Beautiful. I'm very honored to be invited in a beautiful community of yours. 
and thanks mm -hmm. thanks to my friend John David who made this possible. We can meet and have this lovely meeting together, isn't it? So you have been in the community 10 years, I heard? Much longer, 15 years. 15 years, okay. Mm. What did you learn? <laughs> nothing, nothing. <laughs> I hope I, I unlearned a few things, hopefully. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> okay. We thought we would reveal a little more of the king. <laughs> it's already revealed. Everything is revealed. <laughs> Everything revealed. Beautiful man. Beautiful man. What did you unlearn? What was the first thing that you unlearned? <laughs> um, I haven't unlearned it totally, not totally. Huh? I've written it down a question. Ah, okay. And uh, first I wrote, thank you for this meeting. I'm a bit careful. Uh, um, <laughs> I played it safe. And I wrote, the moments I'm clearly identified with a person, then for sure I'm not good enough, yeah? So I should be different or do something differently. So maybe you can say something about that. No, that is gone. That is gone. <clears throat> you, have a better, you have a better question, come on. <clears throat> I can see you have a better question, come. I'm here. It's beautiful that you see in this moment. That, that prepared question is already answered already. We talked so long ago. <laughs> you know that it's not worth it, isn't it? Mm. To be prepared and all that stuff. 15 years in this commune. Ask me something now. I don't see a clear question. Beautiful. So we are in the same boat. I don't have a clear answer to that. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. I see only oneness looking at oneness, silence talking to silence, beauty looking at beauty, and no expectation looking at no expectation, readiness to face the moment looking at readiness to face the moment beyond concepts, beyond ideas, isn't it beautiful? Be beyond the garbage of our past experiences and questions and answers. You see what, my dear brother, what I have learned or unlearned is not, it's nothing to do with a knowledge that I carry around. It's the courage to meet moment to moment, breath by breath, that which I don't know and can never possibly know. Because if I knew it, it would be a dead thing. Stinking fish, Papaji used to call it, <laughs> which one carries around in one's pocket. <laughs> so basically, to be with oneself or to be with love or to be with God, with Tao, with uh, silence, it's just the courage to be in a flow of reality, in a flow of honesty, in a flow of no neediness to be known, no needing to be known, to, to have the courage to not know anything about the moment. And automatically, by the way, that what we talked before with Om, this trust pops up because all what we are carrying within us and has never been used, authenticity, intelligence, humor, friendliness, heart, all these things, they pop up the moment you don't dare, you don't care to look in your knowledge box. You see what I mean? <laughs> they all come up and one doesn't need to know anything about them. Yeah. They are there and I look at my brother in the, exactly the same way. You're a beautiful man. I'm so 
Honor to meet you. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Huh? Hmm. <laughs> yes, very nice. <laughs> Where are you from Germany actually? You have little... from Belgium originally. Belgium. Belgium. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Nice. Hmm. And you are R A J. R A J, yes. That's the king. Yes. <laughs> 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 I was promised a new name lately. Okay. <laughs> ask the boss. <laughs> yeah. I have to ask again. <laughs> Beautiful. What name you can give to a king, man? No more name. <laughs> Would be Anam, nameless. <laughs> this is Govinda. Govinda. Go. Kind of... Oh, right. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Tamaham Pajami Adi Purusham Tamaham Pajami Govinda Adi Purusham Tamaham Pajami Beautiful Govinda, are you a musician? Uh, maybe soon. <laughs> this life will Actually, make you sing. This life will make you sing. You will see. <laughs> so out of the blue, he decided to learn the tabla. So he's having. He's got an Indian teacher, and he's learning the tabla. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you found an Indian tabla teacher. In the area, yes. oh, far out. Great, mm. Govinda. Beautiful. Mm. You're living long time in the community? Five years. Five years. Mm. Beautiful. What were you doing before? Um, <laughs> I was studying something. Ah. I just, I, um, just something I didn't really like to do. Uh, uh, no. Okay. I'm um, yeah, very much um, normal society kind of things, like what everyone should do and has to do, and what I thought I should mm -hmm. do. My family. Mm -hmm. Sounds like law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was really tough. Really tough. So good you escaped that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Beautiful. You take care of yourself now. That is beautiful. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to hear. Mm. We contribute the most, you see, to our society, the more we take care of ourselves, isn't it? This goes for a community, this goes for society, for nation at large. And now we see actually the negative effects of this because it is society at large has failed to teach this our children. And that's why I love watching this clip yesterday that that I saw from your community to teach the children early enough that they are responsible for their feelings, happiness, responsibility yeah. comes along with happiness to be with oneself <clears throat> instead of expecting others to to tell us what to do and where to go and how to behave. You see that it's how much it has failed the system to be told and to act according to what one is told to believe, to do, to practice. That is really the challenge and 
I think in future we would need many more communities like yours to function and to teach our children, our future generations and ourselves, isn't it? How to trust mm -hmm. oneself, to be what, what we are, to bring our abilities and intelligence that is in the heart out mm -hmm. so that it can act, it can manifest, it can create, it can share. Mm -hmm instead of just learning how one should be. This is such a stupid old paradigm and it's, it's time that it's disappeared, isn't it? It's time, it's, 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 it's rotten, it stinks. It's so beautiful to see the courage of people trying to explore themselves first before they take care of the so-called humanity and others. First, mm. finding oneself and happiness, fulfillment, because we can share only what we have. We cannot share something we don't have. How is one supposed to love if one does not know <laughs> what it is? How can one give happiness if one does not have it, feel it? <laughs> it's not possible. So everybody learn to pretend. And this is the result what we face these days in the world. A massive conglomeration of pretenders on many levels. People that pretend to know, to guide, and some pretend even to follow. <laughs> Govinda. Govindo Govinda? Govinda. Ah, That's a great name. <laughs> you know how much I love this name, Govinda? This was when. I, I talked before at the meeting of this evening when when I was 18, 19, that I felt this attraction for, for India when I heard this song from George Harrison. Mm -hmm. Since then, this word Govinda always lets my heart ring, vibrate with happiness and joy mm -hmm. when, when I hear that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Govinda. Do you have a question also or? Well, I mean, I, I, I wrote down a question and um, I wanted, wanted a bit to know you, you said about Papaji, yeah, that um, Papaji. You, said, you said that he was tickling you. So this was kind of an answer to my question. My ah. question was what, was what moments or what, what, what situations, what, um, what really was happening inside you and which what really touched you very deeply, like what was going on really in the heart and how you were deeply touched and how this, it happened. Govinda, what, what touched me the most, undescribable deep love and relaxation in that moment of being tickled, the mm -hmm. sensation of a deep, deep, deep relaxation. Mm. And like if, if if I was a blown up balloon full of air, full of whatever, desires, whatever, ideas. And I felt very lovingly that somebody stick a needle into that balloon. And the air went out. And a deep sense of relaxation, actually, relaxation. It was not any mental thing. It was just a relaxation and a mm. complete shock that one can be relaxed so deeply, so deeply. I never had, I had experienced many relaxation in massages, in meditations, but that kind of relaxation was, it's still with me. When I talk about it, it's, it is mm. still with me. It's still there. It is on a cellular level, when every cell mm. is allowed to relax and just mm. cooperate and function the way she, it is supposed mm. to function. And there was nobody interfering. And this nobody was such a stress. And this tickling allowed me to relax very, very deeply mm. without leaving any desire to to de-relax again. 
It doesn't mean that there were no difficult situations coming up all the time on a daily base. <laughs> situations coming up. Thanks God. And on a daily base, this which is real is allowed to face with all its honor, dignity and awareness and love whatever situation wants to be met mm -hmm. and the good thing the good news is i don't have to do it because i was only messing up things it is <laughs> <laughs> so love love is for me the deepest and love and trust is synonymous mm. And I just couldn't help it. You see, I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice. Mm. Maybe there was some preparation required and I had been 12, 13 years with Osho before that. Tickling could be effective. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you will. Uh -huh. mm. And I mm. could see lately, I saw this movie. You see, there was lately this movie about Osho how how much love and gratefulness is also for having met this man in, 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 in his body it was an mm. incredible, beautiful experience. And many friends from Lucknow days, they're for some reason against Osho, later they turned to be against him. And I find mm. it unnecessary hustle and comparing. Everybody is the way he or she is mm. supposed to be. And in Osho's way, it was his way to be. In Papaji's ways, it was his way, how he was programmed by existence to behave as a person. Mm. And to me, he said once, what are you waiting for? You were born in Greece and in Greece, people like to talk. So talk. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, once he invited me uh, to sit on his lap <laughs> and, and he said, now you give satsang, you tell the people what happened to you the other day. <laughs> And I was sitting on his lap and I was supposed to ex <laughs> to expand into uh, talk and, and, and sharing mm. knowledge and whatever. That's mm. what he said. Now speak, speak. And he was pushing me. Speak, tell what happened. Mm. And I could not, there was no words coming. And then he tapped on my shoulder and said, you were born in Greece. And in Greece, people... <laughs> <laughs> So we uh, laughed and laughed together. <laughs> <laughs> so honor, honor your your body, honor your surrounding, honor, honor the, even the programs that made you be the person you are. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, everything is contributing to that beautiful moment that we are experiencing right now. <laughs> Everybody comes from somewhere, so that is beautiful to honor and dignify that, to not mm. look back in a negative way. Everything is contributing beautifully mm. to that sweet innocence in this moment. Mm. We have one last guy who would like to meet you. Mm -hmm. His name is Sagar. The ocean, ocean. Where is the ocean? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> you have sometimes high waves and sometimes low waves, huh? <laughs> What? Hopefully some deepness. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. Is is the wave hoping? Or who is hoping? I don't know. Ah. An ocean that does not know. Mm. True, yeah. Deep ocean. Mm. High waves, low waves, hoping that there is some depth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Your nature is depth itself, you know that. Yes. 
Nature. Don't believe in it always, it seems, yeah. That's good. You don't need to believe it. As long as you don't believe it, there's a chance you might really know it one day. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah. Belief has just lies, like lies, they say in German, Lügen haben kurze Beine. Lies have short legs, they don't run mm. very long. Belief is the same trip, you see. It's great. You don't believe. Mm. Just is enough to be the ocean is quite enough, I find. Whoever gave you the name, it's a beautiful reminder to trust and be what you are, the ocean, not looking for depths. The ocean doesn't look for depth, it is the depth itself. And when waves rise, they let them rise, and when they sink, they let them sink. Disappointment rises, disillusionment rises, ecstasy rises, then it falls back. All manifestations are allowed to happen, they're welcomed. And you in the middle, you're resting as pure knowledge, pure understanding as to who you are. Not looking for depths, not looking for experiences, because this is taking you away. Mm. An ocean that looks for depths becomes a little pond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true. It's somehow um, about relaxation, as you said before, it feels like melting uh, then yeah like not being there yeah and yeah. relaxed yeah isn't it it's amazing how the mind always tries to pull us somehow deeper higher permanent it well, has a <laughs> it has a beautiful experience of awakening and then immediately the idea comes how can i be permanently mm -hmm. awake then another job comes up then you work on your permanence and you know everything is impermanent. It's, it's a very, very interesting and worthwhile looking at thing to look how the mind is acting, how it's fooling ourselves. It's always trying to pull us out into another state another person, <clears throat> another deeper experience, <clears throat> something that is not the case right now. No? And this is the big lie. Mind is a liar, basically. And who is mind? It's, it's, it's me, it's you. Yeah. It's not just one faculty. The, this whole thing, this whole persona is a, is, 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 a, is a lie. And we often want to make it only more beautiful. It's, we go to Ikea to beautify our houses and and we go to some satsangs to beautify our knowledge, you know, to add a little bit, mm. some cherry on the cake. <clears throat> but uh, the invitation is like the ocean to be this ocean that you are, without making it beautiful or ugly or deeper. Mm. God Life has made us tremendously beautiful and perfect the way we are, for some reason, for some reason, and this is interesting to look for that reason sometimes, it's interesting, we are never quite happy with what we seem to be. We want to improve on this and on that, and this brings us into trouble. And spiritual masters who are really worth the salt in their cells, as one says, they don't teach anything new other than being and trusting what we already are designed to be beyond the conceptual desired states of the future and beyond developments beyond processed achievements right now and here what we are in this moment mm -hmm. And it's not such a high state of unachievable heights. It's all projections of the mind. It's just resting, relaxing, accepting the fact that there is nowhere to go. In fact, where, where can one go? 
That's why I somehow also like this lockdown situation because many people who are used to do this and that and be super busy traveling here, there, they are forced now <laughs> by this by this situation to to stay to stay at home with themselves. Many freak out. Many freak out on that. Many couples divorce. <laughs> I read somewhere the di divorce rate is rising since the lockdown. <laughs> Because they are they are facing each other themselves and the other. Don't escape. And what else other than love? Beauty and surrender and a deep desire for living in peace with oneself. What other than this is the meaning and the goal of all this what we call life? And the meaning of contentment, fulfillment, And please, let's get rid of these ideas that awakening number one, number two, number three. It's all the spiritual achievement department, which is bothering so many people on the path to freedom. They make a path out of it with cornerstones, with crossroads, turn left, go right, while they're yeah. all the time all right, all ready and all right beautiful people, responsible people, intelligent people, bathed in happiness, bliss and freedom already. And it's perfectly okay to be imperfect. Even that, don't try to be perfect first before you can achieve anything. That is so immense important. You see, I was born in Greece and we were not so obsessed with this idea of perfection. Mm -hmm. You see, maybe this was when I came to Germany, I was a, a young boy and I, and I realized that in this country, there's a very strong current of trying to be perfect or total and mm -hmm. absolute. Maybe that was also why many Germans were so attracted also to Osho, because he was talking often about be total, don't be lukewarm, be hot or cold. But they often they, they didn't get the point. It doesn't mean that you have to manifest something that is not already there. Be totally yourself, absolutely yourself. If you relax, relax. If you sleep, sleep. If you are wired, then be wired. If you're nervous, be nervous. But don't try to be a perfect human being because you are it already. This trial is a disease. It's a problem. Just be. Flow. Take the challenge of every moment's situation and trust that you will respond in an intelligent way. And if this trust is there, the intelligence will support you. It always supports the one who trusts. The one who does not know, he always gets the right support in the right moment, in the right way. The one who is always prepared and wants to be perfectly prepared, he's, he's missing the whole point. He's never really prepared when it's about being there, being prepared. The best preparation is to travel very light, open heart, open view, and innocent like a child. My dear brother. Thank you. Govinda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The ocean, the ocean. <laughs> I know you want to finish with your song. That's why. All the, it's all the same. Sagar, Sagar. It's all the same. <laughs> You just want you just want an excuse to sing your song again. <laughs> to sing a little mantra with you, this is 
called Om Purnam Adaham Purnamidam. It's from the Manduki Upanishad, and it's the meaning is very beautiful. It means here is perfection, there is perfection. So where you are is already everything perfect, where you want to go is already perfect. You cannot add anything to perfection. You cannot take away, subtract, subtract anything from perfection. Perfection is all there is. So it fits. I was just reminded talking to Sagar about it. So, Parry, thank you so much. So beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, John David. Thank, thanks, everybody, <laughs> for having me in your living room. <laughs> <laughs> it's very beautiful, this Zoom, because, you know, it's amazing that it's so present, you know. we. I mean, I completely forgotten that you're not actually here in the room. It's very, <laughs> very intense, this Zoom, yeah? Beautiful. Yeah. 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 Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. And so much love also from Satya to everybody and to you and to the whole community. She's uh, visiting a friend, otherwise she would have been here with me tonight. Yeah, so, and if your daughter likes to come when you visit us, you're all three welcome, of course. Thank you. Everybody, hey. Thank you, thank you. Much love to you, keep it up. Thank you. <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> Whatever can, whatever that is, just keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> much love, much love. <laughs>